the funding for UNRWA has, has been cut by major donor. As a result of that, massive service cuts have taken place. Uh, UNRWA has been able to keep schools and clinics and the food supply to the population ongoing. However, we have to cut the services we deliver. We're not able to save the lives and save the livelihoods of people we should. Right now, people have four hours of fuel a day, and that's a terrible situation. The winter's coming, so we're trying to put four extra hours, so that's eight hours a day, so that people can live a, a semi-normal life. Well, I'll tell you a story. I went to the Al Ritza Hospital, which is a, a children's hospital, a pediatric hospital, a few weeks ago, and I went into the, the ward where the children are kept in a, an emergency ward. While I was there, the, the mains electricity, the four hours a day, stopped, and then the, the, the generator kicks in. I looked on my phone, it took 55 seconds for the generator to come on. In that time, the doctors had to hand pump the oxygen into the lungs of children on life support machines. And that's not one day, that's every day like that. What you want to do is get people off aid dependency. You want them not to be relying on humanitarian assistance. But the, the situation, the context is not conducive. Right now, there is no development activities in Gaza as deindustrialization has taken place. That part of the country is going backwards in terms of development. Unless we can change that and people can actually be less dependent on aid, we're going to have to keep feeding people, providing education to people, and they have no money themselves. The purchasing power of the average Gazan is nil. Uh, there are 70% of people under the age of 30 who are unemployed. 53% is the general unemployment. And the recent World Bank report said that the, the economy of Gaza is in freefall.